Hello everyone. Tiger Good Reads give you good thing to read to listen. Today let's talk about cash. Today I will talk about what is cash, how to use the cash correctly, and the main challenges we need to solve. For us, when we want to do the cooking, we need to go to grocery to buy the fish, meat, vegetables. But uh, we don't go to grocery each time we need to prepare for the dinner. We will buy once in the grocery and then store them in the refrigerator. For the refrigerator, it's a kind of cash. When we browse the internet, there are several kinds of cash used in the whole process. In our browser, we have client cash. Then those static resources will be cached in our browser and we don't need to request those requests each time. When we access an internet, there's usually a CDN cache. It will distribute uh, those content to the nearest endpoints that we can access. And in this way, it can accelerate access speed. On the server side, it has a server cache. For each query or access, we don't need the IV request that goes to the storage, but some of them will go to the server cache and that will speed up the speed. So from previous example, we know cache is a temporary storage space that makes future queries faster. When we use cache, we use it in a read-more, write-less scenario. If your service is, has too much write and less read, maybe it's not good for you to use the cache. And for the cache, is a key value structure. In the Java, you can use the hash map, and it's similar as that. When we use cache, often we use that because of the memory, Speed is much higher than the I.O. devices. If we use the database, the foundation of the database is the files, and it needs I.O. access to the storage. And that speed is not very high. And if we use cache, it's in the memory, and it displays a very high speed. We can see that the QPIs, query per seconds, for the MySQL, usually it can handle 1K QPIs. For the NoSQL, like DynamoDB, uh, Cassandra, or the other NoSQL database, it can handle 10K. And uh, if we use cache, it's totally in the memory, it, the QPIs can up to 1 million. Now we already understand what is cache, and let's see how to use cache. The first thing we want to talk about cache is a replacement policy. We say that cache is a key value store and similar as the Java hash map, but in fact, it has some distinction from those key value store. For the cache is in the memory, so it has a fixed size, and if more value put into the cache, it will replace the, some of the elements. This means that memory will not increase forever. Thus, we introduce the replacement policy. For the cache, usually there are two common policies. One is LRU, the other is LFU. LRU means least frequently used. It means when the cache is full, we add another element into the cache. We will find an element that is least recently used and then remove it. Then we can have space to insert the new elements. This policy is often uh, mentioned in the algorithm interview and uh, 
the implementation uses the doubly linked list and the hash map. The second thing we need to consider is that how we use the cache in our architecture. We need to think about the read strategies. There are two ways to use cache. One is cache aside, the other is read through. Cache aside means a cache is a standalone cluster, and when the application wants to query the cache, it will read the cache, and if cache hit, it read from the cache, otherwise it will go through the database. For the read-through architecture, application will talk to the cache only. If there's no elements in the cache, cache will have a back-end thread goes through the database to get data back. Another consideration is that how the cache used in the transaction. Let's explore the cache asset example. Usually we need to get data and first we query the cache and if there's no data in the cache, we will query the database and then put the data into the cache. For the set, we need to clear the cache. There are two ways. One way is that, uh, like this example, we first delete the cache and then set the data into the database. For this solution, if in a multi-thread environment, cache could be set all data. The first thread will call the set and the cache is deleted. And then another thread called the get. And since the, there's no data in the cache, it will call query the database and uh, using that uh, old data set into the cache. It means that the cache could be set all the data in the multi-thread environment. Another solution could solve this problem. We could uh, set data into the database first and then call the cache delete. In this way, we will have no that uh, multiple transaction uh, issues, but we will have another issue. If cache delete failed, then that data will be left into the cache and this will bring the inconsistency. So which solution is better? Compare these two solutions. In the industrial environment, we usually use the second solution and set the database first and delete it from the cache. There are two main reasons. Once cache failure is less likely to happen than the database failure. So we have less chance to meet the cache failure issue. The other is that uh, if the data is still left in the cache, we can use cache TTL or timeout help us to cache to eventually consistent. Now let's move on to the main challenges. There are three challenges. One is cache penetration. We can see that the cache, if it's missed, it will go through the database. If there are a lot of queries that uh, go through the database, it will increase the burden of a DB, and this scenario is called cache penetration. This usually happens that the key doesn't exist in the cache key. Of course, such a key also doesn't exist in the DB. There are usually two ways. One way is that we can cache empty data. When the application calls the database and get empty results, we put an empty data into the cache. And in the future, when such a client query happens, it query the cache and get an empty result. 
then the application know there's no data in the database and it, it will not it just return the empty data to the client. Another solution is that using the Bloom filter. Bloom filter you can treat it as a hash set or hash map. It cached all the keys by the hash function, so this and uh, store all this information in the memory. In this way, it's a very efficient way to check if an element exists in the Bloom filter instead of the database. The second cache issue is uh, cache breakdown. It means that uh, when the hotkey expires at a certain point in time, and there are a large number of concurrent requests for this key, will hit the database. For example, if you have a dependency that is provided the configuration, and uh, your application is heavily rely on this configuration. When the cache expires, since too much traffic goes to that dependency, you can see the latency increase. For such a problem, usually we have three solutions. One is that we use different TTL. Although the cache keys are put almost in the same time, but they have different uh, eviction time, this will reduce the transaction number request to the database. The second solution is that using mutex lock come with the cache. And uh, when one request to the database and the other request will be blocked. The third solution is that using the loading cache. Loading cache is a concept in the Google Guava cache library and it provided a read through cache. We can implement the logic that uh, for the client's request, if cache is bears, it's the cache still returns the legacy data to the clients. And at the same time, cache will request to the database for the new data. And uh, when database returns the new data and uh, the cache will be refreshed with the new data. In this way, when the cache expires, legacy data is still used. This ensures that the cache breakdown will not happen. The third challenge is that cache avalanche. This is the scenario where a lot of cached data expires at the same time. All the cache service is down, and all of a sudden, all searches of their data will hit database. In the industry, we usually have several solutions. One is that using the high availability cache cluster. The second solution is that using the circuit breaker. It means that uh, we if the request to the database get an exception and the circuit breaker found too much exceptions happened, and the circuit breaker will break down the requests. And in this way, this will protect the database to have enough time to recover. The third solution is that using the different TTL. That's all for the today's discussion about catch. Thanks for watching. This is Tani. See you next time.